Hello and welcome to day two of my banqueting build log for Stronghold Kingdoms. Now to get started I will be covering the researches I completed in the past day. So I put an additional point of research into banqueting which unlocked access to metal bashing. I then proceeded to put two points of research into metal bashing first to unlock the actual building and the second one to increase its productivity by 20%. I also increased carpentry productivity by 20% as well as hunting. So getting a start on boosting that because as I mentioned in the first video, I will be fully researching and maxing out the first four disciplines in the banqueting tree. So hunting, carpentry, metal bashing, and tailoring. All of those will fit in the same village type and I won't have to worry about using very unique village types and I'll also be benefiting quite greatly from having just four cards in play that will apply to all my villages. This is a long-term strategy, of course, and you're not going to be seeing quite as much progress within the first few days as you did in my no cards build log so you know if you were interested in very immediate progress you might actually prefer that one I did it with no cards at all you know it's a completely free build in this build I'm actually using a fair few cards although they are cheap cards they are cards nonetheless I didn't uh, put any research into either the military or the farming tree in the last day so we're going to jump right over to education and I put three points of research into engineering to increase my my storage capacity. And this is really a quite a simple concept because if you're not going to be by the game all the time, you're going to need some flexibility in terms of what you can store. And I intend on increasing the haul capacity in the near future because I'm going to be producing a lot of banqueting goods and I really don't want them to go to waste. Finally, in the education tab, I put four points of research into arts for a total of five. So that pretty much covers research. Let's take a look at rank. I'm currently a commoner third grade now. This is a little bit behind how well I was doing in my no cards build log and I have been playing cards in the past days so it's a little bit more expensive in the short term. So let's take a look at the cards that I used within the past 24 hours. To get started I've been using the cheapest orchard management card. This has been able to keep my apple production up sufficiently well to the point where I am making enough excess food to actually sell it to the market to make gold. The same applies to cheese. I'm using the milkmaids card, the basic one, and it's producing a fair amount of cheese for me to sell. If you're interested in stepping up your game a bit, you could go for the advanced versions of these cards because you're going to be making more food within that time frame, which means you're going to have more to sell. When it comes to industry, I have been using both the woodsmanship and stonecraft cards. In banqueting, I have been increasing the productivity of all my currently placed banqueting good types, such as venison, furniture, metal crafting, and soon tailoring. So as you can see, some relatively cheap cards there, but they do a good job of boosting your economy. Now, when it comes to actual village development, I haven't invested a whole lot in it. I think I placed an additional hovel and I placed both of these metalware workshops. And this is because I plan on converting this village in the next couple of hours because I need a highland. And the reason that I need a highland is because it has a lot more iron that I can make use of. And with this build, we're going to be going heavy banqueting into the first four good types. So I'm interested in maximizing and balancing between those four good types as much as possible. So we're going to need lots of forests, lots of grassland for the tailor's workshops, and of course a lot of iron for the metalware workshops. And once I have converted to a highland village, I'll have exactly that. So as you can see here, I am spinning my wheels a little bit within the first couple of days of this build. You're not, you're not going to see as much progress, but it's a little bit of a longer term game that we're playing here. So, you know, not seeing as much progress in the early parts of the game is not really as significant as you might think. So that pretty much takes care of the progress that I experienced personally. But let's take a look at the parish. Now, I recently took over the stewardship of this parish simply by voting myself in with fair votes. It's really not that difficult, but you should keep in mind that once a parish has a steward elected, people can then flag raid you. And to this end, I place two guilds, the Woodcutters Guild and the Orchard Workers Guild. Both of these cost one flag and a minuscule amount of gold, 100 gold, I believe. And they're great for early productivity boosts. Maybe if I get into a house, this will give this parish a little bit more protection against early game flag raiders because I simply do not have the defenses currently in this parish 
to hold it out on my own. And you have to keep in mind that parish development is very crucial to your own development. If you fail to develop your parish properly, you're going to suffer in the long term. So we want to focus quite a bit on this parish and make sure that it, it's upgraded to the best of our ability. There are not going to be a whole lot of players in here to upgrade it with us, and the main responsibility usually falls on the shoulders of the steward, so don't be all that surprised if you end up doing 90% of the donations yourself. So hey, that pretty much covers the progress that I've experienced within the second day of playing Island Warfare 1 with a focus on banqueting. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much, as always, for watching, and I hope to see you next time.